Hey YouTube, what's up? This is Ben from the Be A Photographer channel, and in this video we're going to be diving further into layer masks and showing you two of my favorite tools to create them, and that is the linear gradient mask. So that's what I used here in the bottom image to bring the details back in the sky here on the Lamborghini Murcielago. And then on top, I used the radial mask tool in order to bring a little bit more brightness to the rims on this Ferrari F430. If you want to follow along with the editing of either image, I've included the raw files as a free download below, and the password to that is be a photographer, all one word, and I will show you how I did this with a layer breakdown, and then I'll also walk you through how to actually use these tools in Capture One Pro 20. Let's go through the changes on this image here. So I'm going to show you in an upcoming video what the clone heel can do and how to use it. But as you can see, we removed a lot of the reflections here. So there used to be a reflection in the tail light. I got rid of that. There was a reflection above the tail light. That's gone. The rear bumper reflection and the carbon reflection. So those highlight points are now all gone and that'll be in a future video. And then I added a little bit more contrast and saturation to the tail lights by just using the brush the same way we did layer masks in the previous tutorial. Then I brought up the brightness below this hip line on the car. So if you look at the mask here, that area got brighter just with a slight exposure and contrast tweak and bringing the blacks down. So you see I have control of the car right there. And then I brightened and desaturated both the front rim and the rear rim. Let me walk you through how to do that. Here we have our image completely reset and we are gonna use the radial tool. Radial is just circle, think radial, radius, circle. So we're gonna click this button here and then we're gonna right click, make sure draw mask inside is selected. That way your radial tool will work the same as mine and you just click and drag either to the left, right, bottom, or top, and it will make a circular based shape. So if you drag to the right, it'll make this oval shape. If you drag down, it'll make an oval this way. If you want a perfect circle, just go ahead and hold shift, and you see that it makes a perfect circle. Now it has these three rings in it, and I wanna walk you through what those three rings mean before we actually get into editing the rim itself. So let's turn the brightness down really low, just so you can see an example of this and I'll turn on the mask. So you can see it's kind of the darkest, deepest red here in this middle circle. Then we have the second circle, and that's where the effect is only 50% as strong. And then in the third circle, you can see it fades off. So if we did it with the exposure, you can see it's the darkest in the middle. Then it goes just a little bit darker on the second circle, and then the outer circle has almost no effect, right? So as we move that, you can see that the effect isn't a hard circle like this, since we have that separation in the circles, it feathers out. If you want a hard circle, you just bring the lines like that, and you'll see now we have kind of this blob here, right? And that's a very hard circle, but we want them to be soft typically. So what we're gonna do is drag out on the third line, and that will feather our mask. So now that you understand how they work, let's use this to our advantage and brighten the rims. Let's do a little bit of editing on this background layer and then we'll get into retouching the wheels. So I'm just gonna bump the exposure a little bit, bring the highlights down, bring the contrast up, and I can change my white balance if I wanted it to be just a little bit warmer, right about there. So you can see super easy. We have our minute adjustments done right there. Looks better already. And now what I'm gonna do is zoom into the rim and create a new mask. So I'm gonna call this one rear rim. And then I'm gonna hit the radial tool here in the bottom right and press M so it shows my mask. And now we can see that I'm creating a circular type shape. Since the wheel was not straight onto the camera, what I'm gonna do is create more of an oval shape and then grab on the second rim here or the second ring in this mask tool. And I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger than the actual rim. So there we have it. What I can do is control the exposure of the rim so you can see as I bring it up, it gets brighter. And then I'm gonna turn down the saturation just a little bit so it doesn't look as cold and blue. And there we go, we have the rear rim adjusted. I think that's a bit too high, so I'm gonna go about half of that amount. And there we go, rear rim done. Now let's do the front wheel. So we're gonna create another layer. We'll call this the front rim, grab our tool again. And you can see because it feathers, we don't have to be super precise actually. So we can do it kind of like that, rotate, and place it above the wheel, check our mask, pretty good. And the one thing that I wish Capture One did, which it doesn't do yet, is be able to copy adjustments from a layer to another layer. So this one, we can see our exposure is 0.32, our saturation is minus 22, so then we can go to our front rim and write 0.32, then go down to minus 22, and now they are adjusted the same, right? Those numbers, whoops, 
right here are now the same on the front and rear rim. If you are doing this and you have a lot of numbers, each one is different, or you changed a lot of things, my recommendation is to simply hit Command Shift 4, take a screenshot on your computer, and that way you can just look back to the screenshot and copy those numbers. I know it's a little bit of a hassle, but hopefully this will get addressed in a future update of Capture One. And now you see how we did the front rim and the rear rim and the other masks for things such as the taillights and the car use the same brush tool that we used in the previous example. Let's move on to the linear gradient mask and that is similar to the radial tool we just used where it feathers off from the start point to the end. So you guys can see in this mask, it's that darker red on top and then it gets lighter and lighter as we go down. So if we click on it and take a look with our linear tool, you can see that here I have it stretched from the top down towards the bottom. So if I were to grab this all the way down to here, you can see now it's starting to affect the car, right? The car is getting darker and contrastier and more saturated. And as I move this up, you can see then it becomes gradually less strong on the car and it's just affecting the sky. So what's really cool is you can just have this gradual flow decrease so it starts really strong on the top and then it goes down this is amazing for landscape photos or anything like this where you want to make a sky pop so how do we use it let's delete the layer first and i'm going to create a new layer we're going to call this one sky and then we grab our linear mask tool so that's going to be this one right here and then we can click and drag anywhere in the image so for the sky since it's up top i'm going to drag from here and if i wanted it to go straight down I could hold shift and you'll see that that makes a perfectly straight line. But since the horizon line is off in this image, I'm going to rotate it by just moving my mouse to the left or the right. And we can rotate it later, so don't worry about being perfect. But I'm going to do it to right about here where the sky ends. And so if we click M, we can see the mask. And now when we control the exposure, you'll see that the darkest point where it's 100% affected is here in this top half and then it gradually fades off the strength of that effect. So again, if we grab it down, it'll make the top of the car a little bit darker, and this just makes the whole image look a lot more real rather than brushing and then having to worry about the flow with the brush. So right there, we have it, I'd say, pretty well set up. If I wanted to rotate, I could just grab here on the middle line, and I can rotate where this effect happens. And if I wanted to make it unequal, so you can see when I drag the bottom, it makes kind of an equal gradient. If I wanted the fall off to be spread out a little bit more, I can hold the Alt key on my keyboard and then make it go even softer here. So by holding Alt on the third line, I can move that fall off point just slightly. And there we have it right there. So all I'm gonna do here is adjust my sky, bring the exposure down a little bit, bring my saturation up to get those blues, little bit of contrast and then if we wanted we can also add some clarity and just like that we have our before sky is not really popping and we have our after super easy to use i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you did share it with a friend give it a thumbs up subscribe and i'll see you in two days for the next one thanks for watching peace